Another week, another series of events getting influencers into trouble. From Glamzilla getting called out for dragging Elf, Michaela being forced to disclose her ads, and Emma Chamberlain being called out for copying another creator. It's a mess, so let's get into it. As you guys know, Glamzilla is one influencer who regularly gets called out for only posting positive reviews. Many people accuse Glamzilla of giving out glowing reviews in hopes that the brand turns around and pays to turn it into an ad. A lot of the reviews that Glamzilla posts, even if she specifically says they aren't sponsored, always sound like they're sponsored. L'Oreal just launched a new concealer secretly. This is a new True Match Radiant Serum Concealer. And as you know, no beauty secret gets past me. Here's the thing, I'm not leaking them because I bought it with my own money because it was on the shelf. Okay, let's dive on in. I'm gonna start off with the shade Light Medium W3. I mean, we rarely see her not like a product until now. She posted a video saying that she doesn't like the new e.l.f. Pout Clout Plumping Pens. I was never an e.l.f. fan, but recently all their launches have been hitting. But is this a miss? We'll find out. I don't know what they've been doing, but it's working. Like, I feel like the research, development, and duping team is really doing a good job. So these are the e.l.f. Pout Clout Lip Plumping Pens. I don't really care if they plump my lips. I care that they glide well um, and they look good. So let's see, I'm using the shade, what shade is this? I Oh, it's got no shade. Let me see the, the packaging. I don't know what shade this is, okay. This is in the shade Toasted. Let's see. Oh no, why did I know? It's very thick, okay, it's very, it's very much like the Tarte, Tarte Maracuja, but it's very thick. Oh man, see, I knew I wouldn't like this. I spoke too soon, I was hoping, hold on. Maybe I'm speaking too soon. Looks good, uh, I spoke too soon. They're very like melty. I do not like this formula, but let's keep going. See, that's not my vibe. I don't know how some people are giving this positive reveal. Like that's gross to me. <sighs> okay, I don't like this formula. Like I know some of you love this kind of stuff, but I don't get it. Like I, that looks good. <laughs> like that's freaking gross to me. I'm gonna try less for the next shade. Gross. Nasty. Not my vibe. But I'm happy if it is your vibe. It's just patchy. It's too thick. You can't... I'm trying, okay? But not... This is why... <gasps> this is just not my favorite formula. But when you wear it light like this, you don't get that clumpy feeling, but you don't get that full coverage look. And I've already applied three. I'm seeing no lip plumping action here. I'm going to let this sit for a bit. Hold on. Yeah, I don't see a difference. For, I'm not even going to open the rest of them. I don't think these are hot fire. However, I think that these are those lip oils by e.l.f. I think this is worth buying and adding to your collection. I don't think these are. Okay, love you e.l.f., but hate this. And she hates this product so much that she actually told e.l.f. that they should discontinue it, writing, Gross, nasty, not my vibe. Sorry, e.l.f. Cosmetics, but this should be discontinued. And usually, this would be a good thing. Seeing an influencer say they don't like a product that's popular and staying true to themselves is good. But people did not appreciate Glamzilla's review. Many people said that it felt like she went into the review with a bad attitude, and some accused her of not liking it because it's not high-end, writing, Why are you immediately hating? She hates on it because it's affordable. The whole vibe of the video already seems like she's gonna hate it regardless if the product is actually good. I feel like she's just a hater for affordable, so she automatically hates it. So much unnecessary shade to Elf in this review. Your vibe was way off from the start and very negative from the jump. Elf has had many hit products recently. You seem uninterested in the brand. Gave hater vibes from the first second. I could definitely tell going into the video that she either tried it before and knew she didn't like it and thought it would make a really good video, or tried a formula similar to it and knew that it probably wouldn't work out for her. I don't think it's because it's affordable and she only uses high-end, because she has reviewed e.l.f. before and she reviews a lot of drugstore stuff and has liked it, but I think the e.l.f. slander, especially when everyone loves them right now and telling e.l.f. to discontinue it, really left a bad taste in people's mouths. 
Even Jacqueline Hill commented on her video and said, it's so funny that you hate it because watching this made me want them. Other people pointed out how funny it is to see how different Michaela's review was compared to Glamzilla's. Is about to have a sort of freaking chokehold. This is how they're starting off 2024 with a bang. What else can we expect this year? Look at the colors. These are the Pout Clout Lip Plumpin' Pen. Who the hell came up with that name? Who? I mean, every brand under the sun is coming out with these. So let's see if the off ones are any good. Cleaning off the lips. I'm gonna stat with the fun colors because why not? You're kidding. Hello? Actually, like, way glossier than I expected, and it has a lot of pigment. All right, let's try another color. This purple shade looks so pretty. These have so much pigment. That's a favorite. These are wicked pretty. They're way glossier than I thought they'd be, and I mean that in a good way. You never know with drugstore. You never know. They did it again. They did it again. But, I mean, it's kind of hard to trust Michaela's reviews when she's affiliated with e.l.f. She had her wedding collab with them. They had this whole pop-up shop at her wedding. I wouldn't expect her to ever say anything negative about them. The main conclusion everyone in the comments seems to be coming to is that this is yet another MAC squirt plumping gloss stick drama all over again. Last year, a bunch of influencers were being called out for reviewing MAC's gloss sticks, which are a very similar formula to e.l.f., and they were ruling the stick up all the way and acting all grossed out when it was clumpy on their lips and broke off. Time to try the orange squirt gloss. I broke the last one, so we're not going to do that this time. We're go Why do I do this every time? Every time. Like, I literally press it up way too hard. Oh my god. I could definitely see that being the case here, or maybe she truly doesn't like them. Everyone's preference is different, but I can see why people got annoyed at her calling on them to be discontinued. Moving on, let's talk about Michaela. A reoccurring topic every single week on my channel is Michaela not disclosing her ads and being called out over it. We haven't talked about her and her undisclosed ads in weeks now, and not because she learned her lesson and stopped. More so because she hasn't stopped and has shown no signs of stopping or caring. I really think it's going to take the FTC catching up on things and finally going after creators like her to put an end to it or for the brands working with her to make sure that she's following the guidelines. Well, it looks like that's exactly what's happening. Michaela recently did a sponsorship with L'Oreal for their new bonding shampoo and conditioner, and I was shocked at how well this was disclosed. Not only was their disclosure on the screen, but she also had the L'Oreal partner hashtag placed before anything and disclosed it in the actual video. This hair needs a little help. It is so dry and I don't even want to talk about my split ends. Apparently this is a very good dupe for a very popular bond in line. And thank you so much to L'Oreal for patterning with me on this video. Let's do this. Feels so healthy. Basically, you don't need to break the bank to have healthy hair. Like, we have never seen this before, and I think this is a huge sign that these brands are worried about the FTC catching on soon and making sure they're safe. The fact that Michaela clearly had to go in after this video and add in that verbal disclosure makes me think whenever she submitted this video for review, L'Oreal was probably like, can you add in a verbal disclosure for us? And so they should. This should be how every single sponsorship is done. I think L'Oreal probably knows after Lashgate, they might be the number one targets for the FTC since that's kind of what brought everything to light and now they're doing a little bit of damage control. Finally, let's talk about Emma Chamberlain. Emma's coffee company Chamberlain Coffee launched a Valentine's Day inspired box filled with limited edition flavors and the campaign photos ended up causing some issues. They did this really cute vintage inspired photo shoot showing Emma dressed up holding the coffee behind a heart cutout that was very much giving old Hollywood. People loved it, they called the idea super creative, and that's where the issue started. Another creator named Miranda Harrison felt like someone from Emma's team ripped off her idea. Every year for the past five years, Miranda has done an advent calendar type of countdown to Valentine's Day where she does a unique photo shoot concept for each day and it's fully planned by her. She's a creative director, she produces it, and she even stars in her own pictures. On day two, she posted this photo of her behind a heart-shaped cutout wearing a wig which was very much giving old Hollywood and this is what she had to say about the concept. 
out. Day two, Miss Valentine, a twist on golden age portraits and Hollywood's biggest starlets from the likes of Diana Doors, Marilyn Monroe, and Jane Mansfield. So when Emma posted her shoe that looked very similar to Miranda's about a week later, she felt like Emma's team had ripped off her photos. She posted a video to TikTok bringing attention to this and calling out Emma's team. Not only have I created these on my own, I have self-funded, produced, directed, glam, hair, style, modeled, all of it. I really do it as a labor of love. And unfortunately, this year, my day two was completely ripped off. And I'm not here to debate on that or not. I'll let the photos speak for itself. So um, my friend had made that heart arch before. I sh asked her how to make it, and I made it out of insulation foam in my garage with my best friends while watching Uptown Girls. Putting these two images next to each other. Ah. The unfortunate part about this is um, I've tried to put messages together for Emma, for her creative team, for Chamberlain Coffee, and honestly, I can't. And the reason why is because what would have been the perfect resolution to this situation can't happen now. Um, I don't need a tag. I don't need credit. I would have wanted the gig. It could have been possible. And it's honestly more than anything disheartening to see how many people are losing their mind over this campaign just because it was presented on a larger influencer's platform. I bought the set pieces to put together that heart on my credit card. The recognition go to a different team or even to a different individual um, who probably doesn't even know that her concept was stolen is just really hurtful. Like I'm not mad at all. I'm, in fact, I'm flattered. Individual and independent work is important. And just because things like TikTok trends and trending sounds exist, thoughts and creative concepts are not up for debate on that one. I've seen lots of people recreate my shoot and take their own spin on it. So to see this one as close as it is, uh, it just hurts. Um, and Emma, if after seeing this video, you're looking for a new creative director, I'll let your girl. And after this video started to get some traction, a lot of people started to call out Emma in her comments, writing, This is Miranda Harrison's original concept, shot and posted well before this. Where's the credit? I think I've seen this film before, at Miranda Harrison. Hey Emma, are you aware your creative director ripped off Miranda Harrison's idea or nah? When I first saw this, I thought, oh, this is not a good look. I mean, the photos are extremely similar, and I could see why Miranda probably felt like this was intentional. But some people think it's just a coincidence. Miranda had posted her photo on February 2nd. Emma posted hers on the 11th. Is nine days really enough time to see her concept, get everything together, book the set, the photographer, stylist, all of that, and get Emma in the studio to shoot, and then turn over the photos? That seems like an incredibly short amount of time to accomplish that, and not to mention irresponsible. If this shoot was for a product that they knew they were announcing in only nine days, you would think they would have had this done ages ago. Well, Emma's team actually responded to the backlash and they showed the behind the scenes of the photo shoot and not only showed the pictures that they used as inspiration, but also showed the date the photo shoot happened. It says January 9th, 2024 was the date this all happened, which was long before Miranda had posted any of her photos. And you can even Google like vintage Valentine's Day photo shoot and photos of hearts and stuff just like this comes up. I don't think the idea is anything really original. It's clearly been done for decades now. Can we really say Emma copied her or was it just purely a coincidence and they both had the same idea? Anyway guys, let me know what you think about everything down below and I'll see you next time.